True story about some art I bought recently. I went to an open studio at a big artist's loft and found some art that I loved and wanted to buy. I was so excited, but I only had a credit card and the artist didn't take credit. Do you have PayPal? No. Venmo? No. I asked him if he knew if there was a cash machine nearby and he didn't know. While I was trying to figure out how to pay him, a guy came in with some cash to buy a different piece that he had seen the day before. He'd had the same problem as me and he managed to come back the next day with cash. It turned out that my friend had cash, so I Venmoed her and she paid the guy and I got my art, which I love. But here is my big question. How many sales did that artist lose because he created so much friction around closing the deal? If you sell art directly to a customer online or in real life, it is impossible imperative to make the purchasing process as simple and straightforward and easy as possible. In this episode, I'm going to break down four methods of reducing friction that will help this purchasing process a lot. And I promise you will sell more art. Welcome to the Josie show where I bring you artist to artist chat about the business of art. I love to help creatives make more art and sell more art because I think you should get paid for the beautiful and important work that you put out into the world. Before I get into talking all about friction, I want to let you know that I have a super quick and handy download about all the ways to manage an art commission experience with your collectors. Commissions are a great way to connect with our fans and make great art, but some care and attention to detail is required to make them run smoothly. Sign up for my pre-PDF worksheet with all the info you'll need to make an amazing commission. You can find it at josielewis.com slash commission. So what is this friction? Friction is the stuff that a buyer will encounter between falling in love with your art and actually putting it on their wall. Friction can be elements of the purchasing process that can cause confusion or aggravation to the purchaser. A wise artist will figure out all the ways to eliminate friction so they can get the money in their pocket and the collector gets an incredible piece of art. So how do we avoid friction in the art buying process? The artist I bought art from could have done a number of practical things to make it a bit easier. He could have ordered a free card reader and a free app for his phone so that he could take credit card payments. He could have at least known where the cash machine or bank was in his vicinity. He could have had a cash app account like Venmo to take electronic payments. And I have four more practical tips, especially if you're selling art online, to make the purchase experience as slippery as possible. The first thing you can do to reduce friction is to make it very clear exactly what the customer is going to get. This is if you have a product listing on your website or hosted elsewhere. You'll want to have several very clear, well-lit, in-focus photos of the thing showing different angles and scale. You think that sounds obvious? Well, if you spend any time on Etsy, you would know that it is not obvious. For my own paintings, I often have one hero shot, which is just the art on its own, and then one shot with my hand or something else in the frame for scale. You might also want to have photos of the art at various angles and maybe a shot of it installed. I also have a full description of everything that the customer is going to get and try to cover questions they might have. For my paintings, the product listing might say something like, this 18 by 24 acrylic painting is one of a kind. The painting is made on a primed wooden support that's about two inches thick. It is unframed and ready to hang. Each painting will be signed on the back and a certificate of authenticity will be included. The second thing you can do to make an easy checkout experience is to make the customer feel secure and comfortable in the transaction. Though we are quite familiar these days with ordering things online, there might still be some uncertainty about buying something rather expensive from a perfect stranger. You want to present yourself and your offer as professionally as possible. PayPal, Stripe, and other credit card apps offer protections for the buyer, but if you bypass those apps and do a person-to-person transaction, 
no protections are offered. This is one of the reasons why I think selling art in the DMs creates unnecessary friction. There are definitely ways to do it, namely creating a PayPal invoice and emailing it to the customer, which I think works fine, but I think you'll sell more if you have a conventional product listing with a buy button hosted on some website somewhere. Having your art on a website with a streamlined checkout process and shipping, payment, and store policies goes a long way towards establishing yourself as legit. The third thing you can do to make a friction-free experience is to be very clear about shipping methods, timelines, and fees. My listings say, ships fast in the USA via USPS priority. Orders over $50 ship free. If your shipping process is slower, people will usually understand, but you need to set the expectation and be explicit about your timeline. You might say something like, shipping fees are $10, we will make your print to order, so please allow five to 10 business days for delivery. The fourth way you can help your collector follow through on their purchase is to think long and hard about those shipping fees. Many a sale has been lost at checkout when the shipping fee was added and the customer got sticker shock. Here's a quick story. I have a tiny little handmade mug addiction, and a while back I was in the online checkout process of buying a very nice mug. When I got to the checkout, the shipping Shipping fee was $25 for a $50 item. Exasperated, I abandoned my cart. I think that the potter in this case would have been better served to price her mug at 75 bucks with free shipping rather than popping in that unwelcome surprise at the checkout. What's your thought on friction? Have you experienced it as a consumer? Have you tried to reduce it as an art seller? Tell me what you have learned. As always, thanks for hanging out with me. Till next time.